Hey guys, how about another unboxing video? This is an item I have had a search set up for on eBay for years. In that time, I think only one other has shown up, and it was not a uh, production model, it was like a custom one. So what's in here? Well, this is what they call a monoscope. What these were used for is to create test patterns of the famous Indian head. This particular model was actually pre-war. This came out in 38 or 39. Check that out. It's RCA 1698. I'm not sure if it's new or or, you know, new old stock or used. So, what is this exactly? Well, if you ignore the front end, it's a uh, CRT. It's just like something like this from Scope. Which has a uh, usual filament, cathode, grid, and flexion plates. Two horizontal, two vertical. The difference is at the other end. There's no phosphor screen. Instead, what's on here, fortunately you can't see it because of this coating, or at least you can't see it very well, but there's a square, a rectangular metal plate in there that has uh, some patterns etched into it, or cut into it. And then you've got a connector here. This particular one has digits 0 through 9 and some symbols. I'll, I'll pull up the specs and show you what I'm talking about. So what would happen is you focus your electron beam here. Shoot it down towards here. This coating here would be connected to a high voltage. So it would attract the electrons down towards this end. And then there's deflection plates in here. So you can have your electron beam scan horizontally and vertically. So you would draw over this whole rectangle, probably about the same field rate as you would have for a TV. Now what you do is you pick a signal off of here. So wherever there is an, uh, a hole or an etched out pattern in this metal plate, the electron beam would get through and you would get a signal here. When it's blocked off, you get nothing. So if you were to apply a slow sawtooth vertically and a fast sawtooth horizontally and hook those up to the x and y axis say on a scope and then connect this output to the z input uh, in other words intensity modulation you would see whatever is on this rectangle on your screen so the the, the version of this i'd really like to get has the fam uh, famous indian uh, test pattern now, I mentioned I'd seen others of these, or at least one other on eBay, and I've seen a few other examples in photos online. And those had, like, custom things like somebody's face. Or uh, they were for a particular uh, TV station. So I don't know how exactly those were made. I don't know if, you, I don't know if I, you could custom order these, maybe. It seems like an expensive proposition. And I imagine these were pretty expensive back in the day, especially in the 30s. This one probably isn't from the 30s. Uh, in fact, it says 604 on it. Hmm, what do you suppose that means? 46? 56? I believe they made these into the 50s. Made in USA. I'm not sure what that symbol means. Military, maybe? Except there's no Jan number on it. So if any of you guys know old tube lore, you can tell me what that symbol is and how to interpret that date code. Be appreciated. There's kind of a splotch there that might be where one of the elements from here actually is making contact with the side there. Alright, so I'll uh, move over to my office and pull up the uh, specs for it and give you a better idea of what uh, this thing can actually do. Okay, here is the only data sheet I've been able to find so far. It's just one page out of uh, some manual, I suppose. Doesn't look like it's official RCA data. I don't know. And it says tentative data, too, so... Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, 
hopefully this is accurate, <laughs> but it, uh, who knows if it's tentative data. So that is what's on that rectangular piece of metal. There's the patterns. So you got five, and then a target, six, some shapes, zero, some more shapes, one, and nine, two, three, four, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then here's the various voltages. So 1 and 14, heater, 2 cathode, 3 grid number 1, 4 not used, 5 focus grid, 6 grid number 4, it's probably the main acceleration voltage, and then you've got horizontal deflection plates, and grid number 2, and vertical deflection plates, internal, internal, and then 14, there's the heater, and then the cap is the signal out. So there's some typical voltages, so you need about 800 volts to run this sucker on. And for deflection, you're going to want around 40 to 70 volts. Alright, so here is some kind of low res, hard to read, but here is an actual schematic of a pattern generator using it. Light on details. It'd be tough to make to actually uh, build this. In particular, uh, some of these transformers. So, I believe the deal is you have your typical power transformer here, 6.3 volt filament, another filament, and then this would be the high voltage secondary. I got rectify it here. Uh, it's half wave. We must have doubled these up to increase the voltage rating. And they're running this just on only 300 volts. Typically, uh, oh no, sorry, there's a second uh, transformer here for the uh, 800 volts. It chose to go negative on that. Uh, sometimes designs, they go negative, sometimes they go uh, positive on the, uh, so in other words, you can ground the cathode and use high positive voltage, or you can use basically ground the, uh, the high voltage and you put in high negative voltage in the cathode. What that allows you to do is use low voltages on the uh, deflection plates. So I think the way this works is they pick off a signal actually from the secondary here. So we got like a 60 hertz sine wave here. And they feed it through a diode to crop it. So you would just get like the positive humps. And then an integrator to make it into a bit of a sawtooth. 12AT7 amplifies it, your vertical size. Okay, that makes sense. So there's there's your vertical deflection plates. Now, horizontal, pick off a signal here and feed it over into this, which I believe is a multivibrator with two AT7s, two triodes. And here's a transformer. That would be the tough part to figure out. What is that exactly? So normally these are free running, uh, you know, oscillator. Picking a signal off here, I'm guessing, synchronizes these two. So, of typical TV, this would be like 60 hertz, and this would be 15,750 hertz. And then uh, it scans it. And then here's where they pick off the signal and go through quite a few levels of amplification. Finally, cathode follower, low impedance to drive a 75 ohm load. What I find curious about this design, though, is there's nowhere to pick off the horizontal and vertical signals. Um, unless maybe, oh, I see they're feeding something in over here. So maybe there's horizontal and vertical sync pulses. So maybe this is like full composite video right out here. Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. But it's not modulated with RF, so it would just be a composite video signal. So I don't think I want to try building this exactly, but, uh... It would be cool if I had two function generators that I could slave together, meaning the sync out of one would drive the other, and then I, so I could keep them, uh, so I could simulate this, low frequency and a high frequency sawtooth, and try to drive this thing. And I could uh, salvage a TV transformer to make the power supply, so some, someday I'll try it. But uh, I just don't have the, the gear I would need right now. I think what I'll do now is set up another search on eBay to keep my eyes out for vintage test pattern generators. 
Um, so, like, for example, the B&K 1077B has a flying spot scanner in it, and you can put transparencies on it with various test patterns. When they work, it works okay, but it's not as high a definition you're going to get out of this. This can produce an, a very crisp, perfect signal, because it's in a vacuum. It, assuming you can etch this metal out accurately, you get a fantastic test pattern. So stations uh, would have these in racks of equipment, you know, and they would, whenever you'd see that test pattern when they end their broadcast day, that's where it was coming from, one of these guys. So, uh, you never know. Someday one of those pieces of equipment might pop up on eBay. Now, as I said, I found this on eBay. I didn't realize it was from Vacuum Tubes, Inc., who I think I've ordered, well, I know I've ordered from before because I've seen his business card before. I think that's where I got the Amperite ballast tubes for my Motorola VT71s. Now, I'm flipping through the catalog, and I got some interesting things here, including a bunch of sockets and socket savers and uh, capacitors. Seem like pretty decent prices. Dial lamps. So, uh, uh, maybe we place another order with them.